Hi, this is Chef Frank Brightson in the Blue Runner Creole Kitchen. Today we're going to make some fried foods. I'm going to show you a couple of simple techniques and a couple important points about how to fry food properly. When it's done well, it's great. When it's done poorly, it's not so good. So today we're going to start by frying some fish, fried catfish. And I'm going to make two batters, a wet batter and a dry batter. The wet batter starts with a couple of eggs, two eggs, and I'm going to whisk the eggs very frothy, get some bubbles in there, some air to make the batter nice and light. Now with catfish, I like to have a little tanginess in the batter too, so I'm going to add a little bit of yellow mustard to the wet batter. We're going to whisk that in, and then I'm going to add two cups of milk. So we have two eggs, two cups of milk, and a little bit of yellow mustard. And that's our wet batter. I'm going to transfer that to a little pan here. And then for our dry batter, we're going to use all-purpose white flour and yellow cornmeal, half and half, equal parts of each. And then we're going to season it. Now there's different ways you can go with this. You can use some spice blends and that's a good easy way to do it. I'm just going to do it from scratch. We'll put a little bit of salt, a little bit of black pepper, a little bit of cayenne pepper, and I'm going to also add a little bit of granulated garlic and granulated onion. That gives a little bit of complexity. And you could add herbs if you like. But that's all I'm going to do here. And I'm going to transfer that to a shallow pan so that we can batter the fish in here. Now, here I have some catfish fillets. And these were kind of large fillets, five to six ounces. So I cut it into strips. I like smaller pieces of catfish and fish in general. If the fish is too large or too thick, it won't stay crispy. And that's because it'll steam from the inside after it's cooked. Here in this cast iron skillet, I've got some hot oil. I use just vegetable oil. And I'm going to season the fish fillets with a spice blend. Uh, there's different ones on the market. Uh, seafood seasonings of all kinds are good. This makes it easy to season a lot of fish with one easy stroke both sides, end to end, so that every bite's the same. And then we're going to go into our wet batter, and then into the dry batter, and straight into the hot oil. Notice that I have a wet hand and a dry hand. That's very important. Now what we're doing here is a technique called pan frying. Pan frying is a good way to cook fish without using a lot of oil. You want the oil to about 350 degrees. And another important thing is the amount of oil in the pan. If you notice, the oil is coming up the sides of the fish without going over. Now, I'm going to watch the fish as it fries. The, the principle in frying is that you have hot oil. And when you drop batter foods into it, it immediately starts to form a barrier or seal, and that locks in the moisture of the fish and it doesn't get oily. That's important in frying. With this pan frying technique, it's important to only turn the fish one time. If you keep turning it, it's going to absorb oil. So whether it's catfish, speckled trout, whatever it might be, uh, start with the right amount of oil at the right temperature and only turn it once. These small pieces of fish, about half an inch thick, will take about three, maybe four minutes on each side. Looks like the temperature of the oil was just right. And I always test that by dropping a little bit of flour into the hot oil. If the flour dances, it's ready. Now I'm going to turn the fish one time. Sometimes if you use, for instance, 100% cornmeal, I think it's a little too gritty. And that's why I like to cut it with some all-purpose white flour or even corn flour. Uh, to cut that grittiness. It's still crunchy, but it has a little bit uh, a smoother texture. 
Now, I can see that this fish is bone dry in the top. It did not absorb oil. That means the oil temperature was correct and the level of oil in the skillet was correct. Those two little things make all the difference in pan frying. This is the same technique we use in dishes like trout munier. We even do soft shell crabs with this technique. Uh, fill the skillet up with oil about halfway up the side of your fish or your soft shell crab, whatever it might be. Uh, the thickness of the fish or crab will determine the cooking time. With fish, it's about three to four minutes per side. Soft shell is more like five to six minutes per side. Another important part of deep frying is what do you do when the fish is ready? Most people put it on a sheet pan with some paper towels, and that's okay. But a better way is to use a wire rack, a little cake rack like this. If you put fried foods on a paper towel and let them sit for a while, they won't stay crispy. They'll get soggy because they're steaming from the inside. The wire rack will keep them crispier longer. Now, how do you know when the fish is done? Fish is done when you can put your finger through it, but don't put your finger through it. Look at this. Beautiful fried catfish, cornmeal, and a little bit of tanginess from the mustard. These are nice thin pieces. They cook quick. Look at that. Crispy golden brown. And the oil will just drain right off through the wire rack and the fish will stay crispy for quite a while. Fried catfish, Frank's way. Now, also today, we're gonna to be frying some oysters. Another great Louisiana seafood delicacy. Fried oysters are hmm, fabulous, but they have to be done right too. Uh, number one, we don't need a wet batter. Oysters are very wet on their own. So we're going to go directly into this dry batter, the same batter we use for the catfish. So we don't need the wet batter. I have some nice Louisiana oysters, and these are nice frying size. These are medium large, I would say. Beautiful. Uh, this we're going to deep fry. And we're going to deep fry the oysters because we want them to cook very quickly all over. We don't want to let them sit in the oil for five minutes. We want to do it in two to three minutes flash fried, sort of. So it's the same principle. We have a deeper cast iron skillet with a little more oil in it. I fill the pot up about one third with oil. As the oil heats, it will expand almost halfway up the pot. And then once you add your fried seafood, it's going to expand even more. So leave yourself a safety uh, border. Uh, don't fill the skillet too much. So again, wet hand, dry hand. I'm going to put the oysters directly into the dry batter, a few at a time, and we're going to drop them directly into the hot oil. And these could, should cook in two to three minutes, very quick. Perfect temperature. Even if you're doing a lot of fried oysters, do them in small batches. It'll actually go quicker that way because the oil doesn't lose its temperature. I have a little skimmer here, or what's called a spider, and this is a good way to keep the oysters moving. They go very quickly. Done. It's like two minutes. Oh, I can hear them. They're crackly, crispy good. Really nice. Of course, this would be a nice platter here. Catfish and fried oysters, a po' boy, or fried oysters over a salad. Delicious. Good way to eat in Louisiana. And of course, in Louisiana, we're always looking for good ways to eat seafood. One combination that I enjoy is fried oysters or fried shrimp with white beans and rice. Some hot sauce, and you've got a good Louisiana meal. Thank you for joining us in the Blue Runner Creole Kitchen.